Um, I'll make sure that most of the session can be taken by Joachim, uh, by our guest speaker. Um, but we we had a few updates for you as well. But we'll just see how much time we have for worst case scenario. We can always do updates we added for you in uh, in the agenda. So I'll just introduce Joachim before uh, I let you speak. So uh, our guest speaker studied mathematics. Yes, philosophy of science, Russian language and literature at Umia and Stockholm University, library and information science at Boras University College, and in 1996, PhD in Slavic language, Russian. Uh, you have so much history, you work in, and you studied so many different things. Um, I'm just looking at all of uh, what you studied, and I, I can't put my head around this. Um, it's not important. <laughs> You've written a dissertation in 2008 on the purpose of evolution, the struggle for existence in the Russian Jewish in 1900. And um, Joachim worked at the National Library of Norway. Uh, and I might pronounce it very wrongly, so I apologize. To the Thun University College Library, also at the National Library of Sweden, and the latest job where Joachim Parsi works is at the Stockholm University Libraries. I'll mute myself now and I hope you will be able to share your screen. And I hope everyone is able to access the agenda as well so you can add questions there as we will be taking questions and have a discussion after Joachim's talk. Okay, thank you. I'll try to share my screen. Um, I'm going to share all of it. Uh, and then there is this menu bar that is annoying at the bottom. Um, let's see. So uh, I'll just try to keep calm and carry on with my presentation, although that, that is not my natural mode of being. So bear with me if I should get a bit giddy sometimes or uh, nervous. Uh, so this is a presentation that was originally for the Focus Open Science that been workshops that been traveling around Europe and was in Stockholm uh, in June. Uh, but it's an extended version for, uh, just for you because uh, then I had only seven minutes. So I'll, I hope I'll have some more minutes today. Uh, as you might know, uh, some of you uh, in Sweden, it is a national requirement to have a DMP uh, for all the grantees from at least from the Swedish Research Council. Uh, already from 2019. Um, and uh, so uh, Swedish Research Council, VR for Vetenskapsrådet for short, uh, they offer uh, a, a DMP template in DMP online um, since some time back. But this template, like most other funder templates, ha has only free text fields. And so it is both a burden to fill it out uh, properly. You have to write an essay and it's also a somewhat uh, complex to, to review those. So that's why we decided at Stockholm University where we already had DMP online uh, as a tool uh, from 2018, I think. Uh, and then it was later offered also by the Swedish Research Council uh, and soon at the Swedish University Network uh, as a pilot uh, service uh, for free to test. And now it will become a regular service, but then uh, of course we will have to pay for it. Uh, so it is. Uh, it will be used by many Swedish uh, universities uh, and uh, is used already today by several. Uh, there are other tools 
uh, for making DMPs uh, like Argos, the uh, data stewardship wizard DMP tool, which is a partner of DMP online in the DMP roadmap. Uh, there is e easy DMP and RDMO. And all of these are at least more or less trying to adapt to or, or facilitate uh, the RDA, the Research Data Alliance DMP common standard uh, with its particular schema for machine actionable uh, DMPs. Um, let's see. Doesn't. So uh, there are, as I already indicated, multiple purpose of making a machine actionable DMP template. I will try to see how I can move this menu bar that uh, hides part of the, the screen for me. Uh, multiple purpose and the, 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 the most important for us is to uh, try to ease the administrative burden on researchers to fill in a DMP. Uh, and we try to do that by means of preset multiple choice answer question uh, options, drop down menus, radio buttons, and also by having a, an extensive local guidance directly geared to uh, the um, local conditions at Stockholm University. But at the same time, we try, uh, we're trying to facilitate at least a semi-automated review possibility of such a review and uh, a possible evaluation of the fairness of the prospective um, uh, research uh, data management uh, uh, described by the DMP uh, and also retrieving needed information for our own uh, RDM administration. And the third, purpose then to conform uh, to the RDA DMP common standard. Uh, it should be said also that uh, this work is also part of the European Open Science Cloud Nordic project, uh, notably work package five, the task 532, um, which is uh, specifically on uh, machine actionable DMPs. Uh, and we have other members, uh, some of them perhaps uh, participating here today from uh, Uninet uh, Norway, SD in Sweden, and from the GoFair Foundation in the Netherlands and elsewhere. So, uh, part of uh, the development, the cost of uh, developing, uh, doing this work is actually covered by EOSC Nordic. There is something with my cursor. I can't uh, seem to move there. So some features of this uh, template, it preserves the structure the sections uh, and original questions from the Science Europe Swedish Research Council uh, template uh, with, uh, but then with more specific questions and answers through check boxes, drop down menus, radio buttons, and so on. Uh, and we're using the DMP online or the DMP roadmap API version zero uh, to get the output then as JSON of entire DMPs filled out questions and answers for further processing. And the workflow in this processing is as follow. We first then get the raw JSON output uh, by using uh, uh, curl or, or some other device for, for uh, treating APIs. Uh, and uh, then we use um, an XML editor, uh, Oxygen, 
uh, to uh, convert uh, the JSON output to XML uh, for further treatment. And then we have a, an XSLT style sheet to transform the XML and converted XML output to a format that allows us to make a certain fair evaluation and also uh, to from there uh, uh, convert it back to JSON and validate it against the uh, RDA uh, MAD DMP schema. So you will see in what follows how this works a bit later. But there are also some challenges that should be mentioned in creating a, a my DMP template in DMP online. Uh, one of them being that uh, you cannot actually share <coughs> a custom template with others uh, in other formats than through PDF in inside uh, DMP online. It's not like you can share uh, or get uh, a variety of formats of uh, individual DMPs. Uh, so uh, to help this, since we, we are very much interested in sharing our experience with others and have them try to model their own uh, templates, um, machine actionable template. Uh, I have actually, I can, uh, I have put in the, uh, the collaborative notes, a private link, which is the, this one to uh, our, um, to a record in Dataverse where we have several files. And, uh, and if you click that link uh, or maybe, I don't know if I can, no, it's, it was not possible. You will uh, hopefully get to this place. Uh, so you'll have to click the link in the, in the collaborative notes that says private link Dataverse. Uh, it was uh, on page two when I first, uh, let's see. When I first, uh, this is a bit weird, I can't see my original here. Yeah. Um, if you see, ah, well this, no, it's, um, here, this one. If you click that one, you should get here. And here you see the whole, uh, the whole record with all the files. And I recommend you to, uh, to click on the tree view. So then you will see, um, you will see um, here, uh, down here, the preview of the template uh, in HTML format. If you download that one, and preferably together with this, uh, these files, uh, and, and then you should be able to, to view this in turn, uh, which is a preview. Of, of the template, but it's not the actual template. You see, you can't, you can't do anything with this. Anyway, let's see if I can get back to the presentation. So um, that is something that we would like to see, uh, the possibility of 
sharing a template also, uh, not only the actual DMPs. Uh, then there another challenge is that the cover page details, I think I'll, I will have to stay, is it okay with you to see it in this mode? Because uh, I can't really move around that easily otherwise. So uh, if you, uh, the cover page details like funder grant idea, those are not part of the output uh, from the API. Uh, so we'll we had to add those separately. If you look at an instance here of, of a, a DMP, uh, you will see this cover page, and here uh, you can, here you can add something, but here you can't even add anything. Uh, should not be able to now. It seems, but uh, if I start writing, ah, oh, you fixed that. Is that right? Anyway, uh, until recently, you could, uh, even if you managed to enter something here, it would not appear in the API uh, version zero output. So that's why we had to uh, add in, in a specific section, uh, in the administrative section, we added questions about uh, funders. And here we have uh, enumerated funders that are present in these SWIC, in SWIC uh, system uh, from the Swedish Research Council and soon uh, basically, and then you can write others if, your founder is not part of those. And the grant idea and the funding status. And all this is also to comply with the RDA DMP common standard. Um, uh, another um, challenge is that uh, uh, compliance with the RDA DMP common standard required JSON output conversion to XML in our case. Uh, and then transformation to XSLT. This is not a, a, a big challenge for us with, with the tool that we use, uh, which is, um, I can show it to you, uh, which is called uh, Oxygen, as I mentioned then. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, and it, this is so since, um, XML uh, is much richer still, uh, I believe, than JSON, and you can, uh, it's easier, at least for me, to handle than uh, JSON. But this is not a big challenge, it, it can be handled. Um, then uh, in the web form of the, of the template, uh, there is no possibility uh, at least uh, almost no possibility of having uh, controlled uh, data types. Uh, of course, if you have drop down menus, uh, then it's uh, not that difficult or, or check boxes, then you can choose. But when you have, uh, like we're forced to have uh, sometimes uh, like uh, type, of data sets uh, or, uh, no, that's not a good example because this is, should be a drop down menu. Although you can't see it here, but uh, you should be able to see it in other, um, anyway. Now I don't find that 
but uh, here, for example, language, you can also have a, a drop down menu. And uh, but when you have te text fields, for example, when you need to give a, an identifier, uh, then you cannot. Uh, um, like here. Uh, you cannot really control how the format, uh, you can just ask in the guidance that uh, people conform to a particular format. Uh, and uh, also uh, a problem that we've had is that no repetition of input text fields is possible uh, as a rule, uh, as is required in the, uh, RDA DMP common standard uh, since uh, uh, they it is based on the DCAT format uh, and to 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 uh, in a way uh, evade this pro problem or, or, or challenge we had to find a workaround uh, for example in the section that we added with um, um, additional data sets, perhaps at the end of, uh, then we had to add a table and uh, to extract from here uh, what uh, the information we need, we have to use uh, these, uh, first prefixes have to be guarded so that we can uh, instruct our style sheet to get whatever is after this ID one and after type one and so on. And of course, there is no guarantee that people actually adhere to this. Uh, so, um, uh, and if there is, uh, and they should also preserve this none which is a signal to us that there has not, not been any input in there. So um, that's our, about the challenges, but uh, we have basically found ways of uh, overcoming those. Here, uh, this is the same then as, as what you see here, only that I've marked, uh, these two first uh, to, for you to download if you want to. I mean, uh, basically, if you have an, an editor, you can edit uh, the preview uh, to and see what it gives you and, and uh, I mean, change the conditions and everything to, to fit your needs. Um, here, the, the numbers here reflect the, the workflow that uh, I described before. So this is the raw JSON number one. Uh, here is the uh, XML converted uh, X, to XML. And then we have the transformed to XML and then uh, the uh, converted back to JSON, which is then uh, validated uh, against, uh, sorry. And down here, we have the tool, transformation tool, the style sheet. And then there are two instances of uh, version three, 33 of the template and the files produced with that, and then version 34. So you have, uh, possibility to com compare those. I should say also that uh, all the files are also on GitLab, but then you have to have a, a special uh, GitLab uh, identity and uh, uh, get an, uh, an invitation from me. So if you're interested in that, you, you can just ma mail me and tell me about it. So, uh, so here are just some, maybe I'll go up and try to do it in uh, some examples of an earlier uh, 
instance, thus a, a real DMP using the, this template. Uh, and uh, so here is just the cover page then. Still having problem to, to navigate. Uh, and this is an overview of uh, the sections and uh, notably sections one to, to six are then conformed to the Science Europe and uh, the uh, Swedish Research Council. Uh, but the other sections have been added. And as this first one, which is uh, actually a requirement from our legal counsel that there be no uh, personal data in the actual DMP uh, other than those relating to the PI and, uh, and project members. Uh, here, uh, one way of uh, sort of say uh, fleshing out uh, the questions, the original questions from the Swiss Research Council and Science Europe, how will data be collected, created or reused? What types of data will be created and are connected? So uh, the first question then uh, is, that we pose is about data quality assurance. And uh, depending on what you answer here, you'll get uh, different scores that we will see later uh, in your um, uh, fair assessment. Uh, so, so we prefer, for example, non-proprietary file formats and sustainable file formats, uh, descriptive file names, uh, and file names with the prescribed uh, character set from the Swedish National Archives. Uh, so th those will get a higher fair score also. Uh, here is a que uh, question from uh, section two about documentation and data quality, how metadata will be created. And then we recommend using a repository for creating uh, a recognized repository. And the first four here are repositories or, or uh, metadata catalogs that we also actively uh, curate. So uh, then you can get uh, support for that. Uh, and uh, so the, this is how we try to motivate people to, to use uh, data repositories uh, that you get uh, standardized metadata in an easy way uh, and you can you get a, a DOI or a PID uh, and you get a possibility of getting curation and also uh, for some of these repositories we have a harvester and transform uh, machine that uh, automatically or semi-automatically archives them for long time uh, preservation. Uh, another question under the same heading about uh, methods of uh, quality assurance. Uh, and uh, then there is a section about legal and ethical aspects where we got help from our uh, our ethics expert and legal experts to, to uh, formulate first question about personal data. And you can see to, to the right here that there's quite extensive uh, guidance uh, with definitions from GDPR uh, for people to know how, what they should answer. But the answers themselves uh, even if the text is quite extensive as here, uh, it's uh, a simple yes, no, unknown, or yes, but not the first part uh, of this when it comes to sensitive data. Uh, and then we will know how to handle that. Here is just uh, first an overview of uh, the workflow that I was into. So. Uh, uh, 
that I described earlier. First here, we have the raw JSON, and here to the right is a, a snippet of the uh, same converted to XML. Down here, we have uh, the transform data and the actual tool for transformation. The uh, And uh, finally, we have the uh, the transform data uh, or DMP uh, converted back to JSON and uh, validated and validation successful. Uh, so again, this is the same, uh, describing the same uh, workflow. And uh, then if we look at it in detail, we have the raw JSON here. Uh, again, uh, the beginning of it. Uh, and you can see that uh, it's not enough to validate against the RDA schema because the validation failed here uh, for several reasons. Uh, a little bit further down uh, in the same, uh, no, sorry, uh, this is uh, converted to XML uh, of the same then. So, so uh, it's fairly straightforward. Here is then the transform data, and you can see here uh, some of the uh, options that we were showed earlier about uh, data quality assurance. And uh, here, uh, numbers seven, six, five, and two obviously were uh, checked. Uh, and uh, then Finally, we have the uh, the same. Uh, this is uh, a little bit further down of the same uh, DMP than still in XML format, as you can see, uh, where we added, uh, for example, this funder uh, uh, funder, and we have uh, mapped funders. To, to their fund ref ID as required in the DMP common standard of RDA. And uh, to the right, you can see how uh, also the fair score plays out. Uh, for example, you get one point for file names with uh, the correct uh, character set and uh, other points for for date stamped file uh, file names and so on. Uh, so uh, it's not uh, difficult to 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 evaluate that once you have it in place. And finally, you see the JSON uh, in the transform data converted to JSON. Oops, uh, and. Uh, you can see here that it validates against the, the RDA DMP, MAD DMP schema. So um, that was the presentation. And uh, I can see I, I'll have to, I cannot see what time it is because I have full screen here. Uh, don't worry, it's eight past 11. Thank you okay. so much. Okay, sorry <laughs> for being so No, lengthy. no, not at all. Thank you so much, Joachim. Uh, it's been so interesting. So what, just a quick question for me, uh, but we'll open uh, questions from the attendees. So what, are there any, any further plans uh, with the work you have done or is this completed? Uh, no. With no, no, <laughs> it's a work in progress. So that's why also this link that you got to Dataverse is a, so far a private link. Uh, it's not very private anymore, but uh, I mean, uh, it will only be a, a regular D DOI, which is already there, but uh, it, it is not activated and it will be activated once the project is finished. But we're actually right now uh, writing uh, uh, up uh, deliverable from this uh, EOSC Nordic uh, uh, project, uh, where this is part of uh, the deliverable 
that uh, we're giving. When there is other work being done there in, uh, in the ECGMP too, uh, and also uh, uh, more general about uh, machine actionable DMPs and the, the benefits of that. And uh, the prospects for the future, I mean, so far the funders have not really uh, wholeheartedly embraced this. And uh, I mean, it's easy for them as long as uh, some uh, funders at least, uh, they don't really do the reviewing themselves. Uh, so, so they have not the same interest as, as we might have to to uh, to have something that is easy to handle and also easier for the uh, researchers to fill in. Yes, no, that makes sense. Uh, we I think we received two questions. I don't know whether you want to unmute yourself um, and just read it Hi. out. It's me. Um, I've I've done some usability testing and many. You mentioned the uh, cover page, which you had to the project cover page, which you had to reproduce as part of the questionnaire. Um, that's interesting because that has been raised during the usability testing. Um, people said that some of the information in there um, should perhaps be in, in the questionnaire. For example, project ID, start date, end date. Um, I don't know how you feel about that and how others feel. You've already well, like, added it. <laughs> like I said, uh, I think the it's important information and in particular to to comply with the rda dmp common standard there is no reason why we've actually had uh, questions also from researchers why can't i fill in my uh, funder and and uh, grant idea here uh, perhaps that has changed now but still we don't get that output uh, as far as i know but uh, uh, maybe that would be easier to fix. I know that we had this discussion before in in these drop-in sessions about decoupling with Patricia to decoupling funder and uh, template uh, like it was in the uh, earlier, at least in in the ups in the setup. Uh, I see several of you are backing that. So you want to decouple funder and template. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. okay that's we interesting. Have, we have one hand up. So I'll just let, if that's okay, Diana, I'll just let Rory, if you would like to maybe unmute yourself. Hi, hi, yes. as well. hi everyone, Joachim, thanks. That was really interesting. I have a question about the, the fair assessment um, aspect that you mentioned. I, I, I Apologize if I didn't fully understand. But first question is: Is this is this fair assessment uh, bit that you put in? Is that part of that specifically part of the uh, uh, of the template that you developed? That's the first question, or is it is it something else? Uh, and the second question is: um, And again, you may have said this, but I missed it. How does it actually work? The, the fair assessment is that carried out automatically uh, somehow by the tool, or does it need to be? Does there need to be uh, human intervention? And the yeah. third question, and again, you may have answered this, is where does the results of the assessment appear? Does it appear in the DMP or somewhere else? Okay, thank you. Uh, excellent questions. Uh, no, um, we haven't come that far yet that it will appear uh, in the actual DMP. Uh, what we would like to, to achieve is to give a report back to, to the uh, researcher after submitting their uh, DMPs or, or after when we have also two points at which we uh, intend to archive. The first is when the, the, the uh, head of department has uh, somehow uh, accepted or, or, or uh, I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, well, accepted a, 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 and a, as uh, fulfilling the requirements of, uh, of the funder, uh, then we will uh, archive for long-term preservation and the initial version. 
And the next point uh, of archiving will be when the project is finished and you have to check a box also. Both those uh, check boxes uh, we give uh, an automatic notification. That is something that I, I appreciate in DMP online that you can have these conditionals that you send an, a, a notification when something has been answered in a, in a particular way. But uh, I, I believe we will do the fair assessment at both uh, at the same time. And I can show you again, how, how it practical, practically works. Uh, if I may share my screen. Can you see this oxygen screen now? Uh, and if I, so the, the fair assessment is done on the transformed uh, then, and then I can, for example, right here, F value. I hope you can, can see this now, right? Yes. It does work. Yeah, okay. And if I click there, you see down here, 10 items. So 10 points. And uh, if you click on either of those, you will see what, what did I get this? finding uh, findable value for. So, I mean, we have uh, ourselves put in those uh, fair uh, assessment values and, and uh, assign them. Uh, it's either one or zero only. And uh, I would, at the beginning, we wanted to use, for example, the fair is fair uh, measurements, but, uh, we soon discovered those are more for uh, the same that are used in this Fuji tool, if you are familiar with that. But that is more for, uh, for, for repositories, I would say, to evaluate how repositories uh, uh, display and, 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 uh, and make accessible data. Mm -hmm. But here it comes to the, to the individual researcher what she or he can do to to uh, make their uh, data more uh, findable accessible uh, interoperable and re uh, reusable and and i can do the same for uh, r values uh, that is reusable uh, and i can see here that i get one point for using non proprietary file formats uh, and so on. Uh, and for providing a, a readme file uh, or, um, uh, no, sorry, for, for choosing this uh, repos uh, metadata through a, a repository and so on. And uh, then I can look, hope this will work now, uh, at the total fair score. So uh, for the moment, this is only for us internally, but we, we are on the side uh, or the idea is to develop a, a schema tron schema also that will report back to the, um, to the researcher what their fair score is and, uh, and uh, perhaps even be, being, they might, even themselves be, it should be possible for them to use this, uh, if we could put up a service that they could use this uh, schema and they just put in their DMP uh, and, uh, or, or the identifier of that and they will get a report. But that is something for the future. Yeah, it strikes me that's a really, there's a lot of potential. It seems to me anyway, there's a lot of potential in there for that for that tool uh, because people love to measure things. They like metrics yeah. and it could become, that's a really interesting idea. So I hope, I hope you're able to continue to develop it. 
Well, at the same time, you, you should be a bit cautious about uh, too much measurement because people tend to take it for uh, saying more than what's in there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Thank you for the question, Rory. I don't know whether there are any more questions. Uh, you can either unmute yourself or type in the chat. Hello, can you hear? Hi, Laura, yes. Thanks a lot for this uh, interesting presentation. Um, I was just wondering if the questions, as you showed a few on some screenshots, are already being used by researchers as well, and if they find them easy to answer, and if you provide additional training to help them answer this type of question, because I would feel that the researchers in our institute would not be immediately comfortable to answer um, in this way. Okay. Uh, well, actually, uh, I'll have to say we. I, if uh, I look at the statistics of those uh, who have found a way to DMP online, uh, most have actually by now used our template. Uh, but uh, that said, uh, I, I'm not sure that they all find it as straightforward at, as <laughs> to use uh, as intended. Uh, and I know for sure that we have had one user recently who had had extensive uh, uh, need for uh, help or guidance uh, and uh, so even if as you perhaps uh, got a glimpse of, of uh, our already quite extensive guidance then, then there is always more to be said <laughs> and it's but it, of course for us it's good to get feedback so we can develop it further and adapt our, our guidance to, to the questions posed. But, but so far, not that much uh, cries for help <laughs> using it. Okay. Um, thank you for the question, Laura. Uh, I don't know whether there are any more questions. Diana, I think you might have added one more as well yourself into the agenda. Or I'm not sure whether it was someone else. Um, I, I asked my question, though I? Okay. Yeah, okay, I think they've, they've all been addressed. Okay. Uh, uh, Caroline Leff, you, you raised your hand at some point. Was this to back uh, an argument or did you have a question? No, no, that was only to back up. But actually, I have a question. <laughs> um, this course that you showed, Joachim, um, what is the metrics for it? I mean, like, what is F53, for example? What, what would you set as a... Did you already decide what is, like, a 100% fair score? Or how do you measure? Do you, do you calculate? Also, do you count, like, how many Fs, how many Is, and so on? And yeah, then... that, that was the, the, the total score that... that uh that I show, but uh, I mean, uh, and uh, 53 is a fairly good score here, uh, but it's, I mean, I cheated since this was my, my DMP, the one that describes this project, but uh, I think the maximum is something like, uh, well, near 60, uh, but uh, I, I don't require uh, even, having 40 or something is a good score, but I don't think that's the real um, importance of this. I think it's uh, the importance is to, to make researchers aware. Uh, this is making them aware about uh, what FAIR means, uh, might mean and uh, it, that it matters how they uh, what file formats they use, what, what uh, uh, file naming standards they use, what metadata standards they use. So, and uh, I think we humans are, are, we like counting things and, and uh, measure things uh, as uh, Rory indicated. So, so this is just 
intended as a, a some kind of uh, device to to encourage people to be more fair. Thank you. It's really great. Thank you. Okay. Last questions. If not, um, I'll just start wrapping up. Um, thank you, everyone, for holding up, and many thanks to Joachim. I'll uh, just. We, we have quite a few uh, sessions uh, coming up. I won't be going through all of them because the list is very long. So please have a look at the, at the notes um, in the agenda. But there are two I would like to highlight for you. Um, we are running DMP online user group on the 2nd of November. If you haven't, uh, if, you, if you wish to take part and haven't received uh, agenda, this is normally internally sharing only via the mailing list please email us at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk and we will share the agenda with the login details for the day with you. And another thing I wanted to highlight for you uh, is also that we are uh, running a training in February 2022. Um, we already have quite a lot of interest, so we will be running the training, uh, but please get in touch with us again, just so we can um, keep in touch with you closer to the day at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. Um, the next user group will be on the 23rd of November, so in a month's time, and we have a guest speaker from Netherlands, from Erasmus University Rotterdam, so again, uh, the agenda is this document we have, I'll be adding more details with the guest speakers' names and more details um, as soon as I can, basically after the session. I'm not sure whether you have any more questions for the DMP online team. Not. Uh, you can always add uh, questions to the agenda or you can email us at DMP online at dcc.ac.uk. Last but not least, uh, do not forget to follow us on Twitter, uh, DMP online, and LinkedIn and subscribe to our monthly newsletter. Um, and I would like to say a big thank you again, Joachim, uh, for your fantastic talk, to all the attendees for um, staying with us and asking interesting questions. And a big thanks to Diana as well for writing the notes and uh, helping me to run the session. And we are all looking forward to see you, if not in the next user group, then hopefully in the next drop-in meeting on the 23rd of November. And I wish you a nice day. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.